sunrise overlooking the Pacific isn't as prodigious as a sunset. Gary and Dale having spent their first night of their venture, camping on a overlook on the side of scenic Highway 1. Gary entertaining thoughts of breakfast and rummaging through their provisional supplies, withdrawing a small box of mapo, a maple-flavored oatmeal and with a little water, a morning snack was entertained. The two youths being uncertain about the availability or the location of the next roadside service, but fuel was never a concern, the Cushman having a mileage range of more than 200 miles. The weather was in cooperation, a clear morning sky for motoring south, the waters of the Pacific ever pristine providing a scenic wonder view from their open-air jitney. A hesitation, a cigarette stop, the two dismounting gazing with admiration of the preternatural outcroppings carved by the incessant sculpturing from the continual sea. Man's mark was encountered the bridges stretching over the exiting ambulating water flow from the mountain crest in search of destiny, returning home to the sea. Traveling on, a wandering vacancy prevailing, the adventurers meeting few travelers to share in the spectacular array, Gary concluding, February was not the month for tourist. The access road sign read San Simeon but underneath in bold print was closed for repairs. Gary having read the history of this iconic historic landmark. William Randolph Hearst having spent a good portion of his life fulfilling a dream, penned by the press as Hearst Castle. With his death in 1951 he left this magnificent estate consisting 56 bedrooms, 61 bathrooms, 19 sitting rooms, 127 acres of gardens, indoor and outdoor swimming pools, tennis courts, a movie theater, an airfield and the world's largest private zoo. Gary realizing another missed opportunity, disappointed but not discouraged, there would be other expositions yet to be realized. Continuation was perpetual and solidarity, the constant disquieting from the scooter's muffler its droning ever-present. The diurnal course progressed and eventually signs of inhabitants, a small community advancing into view, a picturesque town with a famous monument jutting from the sea, Moro Bay. Gary having explored the realm of abalone fishing, Finding this location noted as the abalone capital of the West, renowned for its capacious harvesting. The natural inlet, Moro Rock standing as a monumental pavilion in the bay that established shelter for the many small fishing crafts that lay nestled at Ang. When approaching this diminutive community with its rock spewed coastline, just out of sight fared the Channel Islands of Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, and San Miguel, staunch providers for the mollusk fishing industry. Departing the somnolent coastal town, the aura of graphic surroundings would fade and the well-traveled mechanized world would once again present itself in the form of Highway 101 and San Luis Obispo, a 30-minute destination. The sun was devaluing in the west, its brilliancies diminishing to a fragmented amber and attentiveness was put on the agenda, a station for tonight becoming foremost. A stop for fuel at a commercial location found the two accosting the Pacific. Across the highway was an expanse of beach protected from view by a rising sand dune stretching for as far as the eye could see. Reaching the dune's knoll the two casting a gaze towards the sea, a sanitary restroom station building stood and beyond, a scattering of stationary cooking grills. The beach was deemed desolate, the fog beginning to filter in, nor a person present. The two determined that this bleak area was famous Pismo Beach, its emptiness was similar to San Francisco during the winter months especially in the evening hour when the beach is embraced by the incoming February fog. 
the travelers approved and the appointment was made, they would repose on the beach with the dunes blocking the view from the highway and solitude could be achieved. A gathering of driftwood and a warm fire benefited as the two surveyed their accomplishment thus far. The adventure having materialized and Gary finding the aura difficult to believe, to experience sitting before a contingency of glowing embers, the sound of the breakers discerning their way to the beach and to embrace an inconceivable journey with no benefaction except to be present. Bundling in his mummy sleeping bag, burrowed on the beach sand of the Pacific, the rhythmic sound and slight of the ocean spray providing a concluding audience for a mellowing rest.